All right. Radio people like to uh, make sure we can always talk. <laughs> we don't have a lot of faith in the internet. We don't have a lot of faith in the telephones. We don't have a lot of faith in these things. Yeah, when these work, they work. When they don't work, it's like you have this empty void, right? So what does it take to make a cell phone actually work? Well, standing in my shop here, which is only 36 feet long, I can have somebody stand on the other end of my shop with a cell phone. Okay. And I can stand here with my cell phone. I can call them. We're not communicating from this cell phone to their cell phone directly. I can send them a picture, I can send them a text message, vice versa. We're not communicating direct phone to phone. Okay. It has to go a few miles away, hit a cell tower. From that cell tower, it has to go to a company's switch, wherever that is. U.S. Cellular is in Knoxville, Tennessee. So if this was a United States cellular phone coming from Eastern Maine, I send a text message, hit send. This has to go hit my local cell tower. Then it has to go all the way down to Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> That's a long freaking ass ways away. It has to go through all the infrastructure, all the switching to get there. Then it has to come all the way back, back out through that cell tower to come and contact somebody standing right in front of me. And vice versa. Back, back forth. Boom, 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 boom. Right? Just to make these things work. You take any part of that out of the circuit so it doesn't work anymore, we don't talk no more. Done. And that's just how it goes. So how do we communicate? How do we talk when something like that happens? Let's get into it. There's people who've been asking and always have asked, um, what radios work the best for whatever situation? My, my friends and family, we got to get out of town. I want to be able to talk to them. And, and uh, I don't want to get a ham radio license. So what's going to work for me? Well, the only person who can answer that is you. <laughs> Nobody else. Um, so I'm going to give you a few varying options of what there is available you've got some over-the-counter stuff you can get about anywhere which might work for you and uh then we'll start talking about the the ham stuff which probably would work for you so not everybody's willing to to bite that bullet but We'll kind of do some comparisons of how the radios work and what you can and can't do with them. And uh, some of this is going to depend on your area, your topography. Um, up here, radios aren't going to work as good as out on the open plains where you don't have the obstructions. Up here, we've got trees, we've got hills, we've got holes. The UHF doesn't work so great unless you have repeaters out west where it's wide open forever. Uh, those signals will carry further. City environments are going to vary too. So you need kind of a basic idea of how a radio works, <clears throat> what you can do with it, and how it's going to perform in your area. So let's start jumping into it. Um, I'll tell you right up front, I've been a ham radio operator since 1997. It's 2021. That was a long time ago. I'm not going to be a CB hater. I'm not going to diss CB operators. CBs work. They work good. They have their purpose. And it's a way to communicate. That's one thing that really pisses me off is you watch these videos. You watch this advice. And you've got ham operators. They trash CB people. CB people trash ham people. Now get over it. It's a radio. It's a way to communicate. Do what works for you and shut up. It's pretty simple. So, here we go. Let's get into some stuff. 
We have MERS, M-U-R-S, multi-use radio service. It's five frequencies or five channels in the VHF radio band. This is a MERS radio. It's a piece of junk. But it's what one looks like. It says Dakota Alert on it. What's that mean? Just looks like a walkie-talkie. Told you, it's junk. Well, a few years ago, a guy I know gave me this thing. Yeah, you can talk on it. It's got a push-to-talk button. And uh, it goes with a driveway alarm. <laughs> so what that means is, hey, we got five channels to work with. And uh, what's the first two words of MERS? Multi-use. So it's a party line. So you and your buddies, you and your family, you and your friends, whatever. Hey, we're going to get some MERS radios. And uh, that's what we're going to use. And that's going to be our reliable communications when these friggin' cell phones don't work anymore. Or the landlines don't work. And we need to talk to each other. Okay, good plan. You're on VHF, so that's a start. Well, like I said, you got five channels. Decoder alert. What's decoder alert? It's a driveway alarm. <laughs> uh, yeah, the guy that gave it to me, uh, he had a driveway alarm he didn't want anymore. And I'm, I'm a guy who tinkers and screws around with stuff. I mean, I got gadgets and gadgets and gadgets and whatever you want to call it all through my shop and house. And he goes, yeah, you want this? Yeah, sure, I'll take it and play with it. So that driveway alarm operates on the MERS frequencies. So whenever something would trip the driveway alarm for motion, it would start saying alert zone one or alert zone three, whatever you had it programmed for. And it would transmit that on whatever MERS channel you picked, one of the five. Um, there's other things that operate on MERS. So you're on a party line. So you might be hearing people's driveway alarms. You might be hearing God only knows what. Um, people are going to be hearing you. Keep that in mind. So with MERS, we're going to be talking all the way through this segment here. We're going to be talking legalities, not illegalities, legalities. So legal power up, legal antennas, legal equipment. Sure, you got the people out there that's going to modify stuff, use power amplifiers, teach their own, whatever. They can do whatever they want. If they get in hot water with the government, the FCC, that's on them. So with MERS, you're limited to two watts, just two little measly watts of power. That's all this radio can do. It also has to be a MERS certified radio. And MERS labeled radio. That's that's the rules. You can use an external antenna. That's that's cool. Yeah, they'll let you do that. But there's restrictions with it. It has to be, I made some notes. <laughs> the antenna can be no higher than 60 feet above ground level. Period. So if your house is 80 feet tall and you stick it on top, well, you violated the law. Or it could be no higher than 20 feet above the highest point of the structure it's mounted on. Well, okay, maybe you can skate, skate by on that one, but, you know, I guess it depends on how somebody interprets the law. So, MERS, yeah, it'll work. But you're channelized, and you're stuck with five options to talk with. So keep that in mind, and it's party line. FRS, family radio service. Yeah, great little handy-dandy things. These little buggers here, little pieces of junk, kitty toys, I call them. Get them anywhere. Amazon, Walmart, hunting stores. Everybody, their mother, grandpa, grandma, brother, sister, has them, right? Kids use them for toys. Uh, every construction zone I seem to go through and see, flagging crews are using these things. You know, they drop it, truck runs over it, smash it. Who cares? Buy another one. Cheap. 
So these little buggers, you've got 22 channels. They are shared with the general mobile radio service, GMRS. Um, some of the channels in here are restricted to 0.5 or one half of one watt of power. Some of the channels, they'll let you use up to two watts. It's all programmed in here. You can't change it. You can't use external antennas. This is what you got. These holes are to plug in a speaker mic. So you can clip it to your belt and have your microphone up by your ear or something like that. So you get this little dinky antenna, about half the length of my finger, and that's, that's it. Again, you're on a party line. Everybody's got them, right? Some of these companies advertise these, hey, you can get 25, 30 miles of range. Nope, not happening. Sure, if you want to talk to your buddy who's 20 miles away, 30 miles away up on a mountain, and you both are willing to climb up mountains and get to the top so you can talk back and forth on a schedule, sure, you can probably do it. Then you climb down the mountains, you're not talking anymore. Um, up here, where I live in the northeast, hills, holes, trees. If you can get two miles out of this, you're doing good. But advertising says 30. Bull. Always test your gear, right? Don't take things at face value. Know what works. Know what doesn't work. Uh, some of these companies say their radios, uh, how, they, how they say it. I've seen it before. It's like uh, you have code conversations or private conversations or some crap like that. No, there's, there's no encryption here, guys. Um, these radios are as simple as they get. Some of the more expensive ones will have the option to have a tone coated squelch, also known as a PL tone, a private line tone, which is Motorola's terminology for it. That doesn't encrypt your conversation. So we'll say. You know, we'll say this set of radios here, we're talking on channel one, and we have them set up to transmit a sub-audible, so you can't hear it, PL tone, CTS, CTCSS tone, of 100 hertz. These two radios will talk, okay? Anybody on a carrier squelch or on scanner land is going to hear you. Anybody who's not transmitting that same tone, you will not hear them. So somebody else might be on channel one as well, transmitting 179.9, 203.5, 192.8 tones. You're not going to hear each other. And because you're not opening each other's squelches because of the different PL tones. But. When this radio opens this radio squelch and this radio is receiving and it's in range of the other radio, you get a whole mess of garbage you're going to listen to. So that's how that's going to work. <clears throat> now, this thing about getting the false idea of the private conversation on these radios. No, absolutely not. The PL tone. It's, like I said, it's not encryption. So you and your buddies are doing whatever. And you get on the radio. Hey, run down there and shoot that son of a bitch. Because you you know, you know got your, your, your private encoder on, right? And you're all on your private encoder setting of whatever. Well, guess what you just did? You just put it out there. So anybody else who's on that same private encoder setting. Or anybody else who's listening on a carrier squelch or scanner. Just heard you say, hey, go down there and shoot that son of a bitch. It went out in the clear. There's no encryption there. So watch what you say. All the encoder does, they call it, is put a tone squelch on your radios. Uh, so GMRS. 
you can buy a GMRS, General Mobile Radio Service License. It's an UHF, shares frequencies with those little things. Uh, then you can use up to 50 watts of power on some of those frequencies. Um, you can set up repeaters and use external antennas. Uh, again, you're still channelized. You have very few channels. You're stuck on those channels and you're on UHF. So your mileage is going to vary as far as your range goes. It's going to depend on your topography. Up here, uh, we've got a UHF ham repeater. Um, about what is it, 13, 14 miles away from here. And even with 35, 40 watts power coming from my mobile, I'm hitting that thing. It is pretty rough down for these parts. GMRS is going to be worse. That thing's 20, that's 20 thing. Yeah, GMRS is like 20 megahertz higher than that ham repeater is. So um, the bandwidth is even smaller, uh, the wavelength. So that makes it even more line of sight than the ham repeater. Um, th there's nothing wrong with using any of those by any means. I mean, if FRS, MERS, GMRS works for you, um, you don't have to take a test for a GMRS license. You don't have to take a test or get a license or anything for FRS or MERS. Um, you, you know, get these little cheap things for your kids. You know, you're, you're running around campsites, vacations, whatever. Um, kids lose things, they drop things, they smash things. They're disposables. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, so let's get into CB. What can we do with CBs? The old chicky bander. <laughs> Oh, the thing that so many ham operators hate. Don't know why. You can get down on 40 and 80 meters, you hear some pretty idiotic ham operators too. That you swear are just nothing more than glorified CBers. Which is sad, because that's not what ham radio is about. So here's a old CB on channel 13 at the moment this is a, a base station you can also run it on 12 volts or 120 volts we've got a couple of these have a couple of uh, mobile units that are smaller this is am only chuck it back over here out of the way so with cbs uh, CBs operate at 27 megahertz, well, very upper end of 26 megahertz into 27 megahertz. Uh, 11 meters is the wavelength, so it is in the high frequency band, the upper end of the high frequency band. Um, CB started off AM, amplitude modulation, with 23 channels. They used to be controlled with crystals. Then over the years, they morphed into 40 channels and single sideband, upper and lower sideband was added, which is pretty cool. CB used to be the craze in the 70s and 80s. We watched Dukes of Hazzard, Smoking Bandit. You know, it, it, it was the way to go. You had no internet, you didn't have cell phones, that was your cell phones. CB is simplex only. Radio to radio, just like GMRS, uh, sorry, not GMRS, FRS in MERS. This radio to that radio. You get out of range, you don't talk no more. No repeaters up on mountains to extend your range, nothing like that. Um, as of this year, 2021, from what I can tell, what I understand, the FCC has approved FM for CB. So that's pretty cool. So now we're going to have in the U.S. AM, sideband, and FM. I don't think there's any FM equipment available yet, but it's coming. Uh, Cobra and President are the ones leading the way on that one. Cobra petitioned the FCC, and the FCC gave the go-ahead thumbs up. 
So it's coming. People are saying, yeah, it's just big marketing things. They want to sell more CBs. So they were pushing for FM. So what? Who cares? If you want FM, buy an FM CB. If you don't, then stick with what you got. So with the CB, you know, nowadays on standard, at minimum, you've got 40 channels on AM. Four watts. Four watts of output power. That's your legal limit. Antennas need to be vertically polarized by law. So that means straight up and down. Not horizontal. Not cockeyed like this. You'll see these truckers driving up and down the road to have their, you know, I'm, I'm driving my truck, my antenna's sticking right straight out like a, like a spear. You're an idiot, man. You're killing your signal. You need to get your antenna up and down. It's all about polarization. Beside the point, CBs work. They're cheap, especially just a straight AM rig. You can pick them up for like 40 bucks, 50 bucks, maybe cheaper. You can probably find some used ones somewhere. I'll caution you if you find a used one in, in somebody's garage, especially if you don't know who you're getting it from, it might be illegal. Somebody might have modified it. It might not even be transmitting on CB frequencies anymore. It could be transmitting illegal power settings. I mean, it could be doing 20, 25 watts. Who knows? So, word of the wise, get it checked out. Uh, newer ones, you'll be good to go if you get it you know, from store. So, CB, um, yeah, they work. Absolutely nothing wrong with using it. Uh, if, if you spend the more money, I wouldn't recommend going and buying new CBs right now. If you're interested in FM, FM is a is a lot clearer emission mode than AM is. So if you hold off a little bit and wait till the FM ones are on the market, you can get all the modes, AM, FM, and sideband, all in one unit. Buy once, cry once. If you don't care about the FM and you just want straight AM, go get one of those. If you want to have sideband, go get one that has sideband in AM. If you want to get some distance out of a CB, definitely get sideband. Uh, the sideband, basically what that does is it removes your carrier wave, your AM carrier wave. It gives you 12 watts of power all on the modulation. You're going to get a lot better range on it. Um, there's a little more of a learning curve. You're just going to learn how to tune the radio a little bit. Easy. Nothing to it. So, it works. You can get handheld ones. You can get base stations. You can get mobiles. So, you know, you and your family who are 10, 15 miles away, 20 miles away, you got good base stations, good antennas that are tuned correctly. Uh, you should be able to communicate, especially with sideband. So, that might be an option for you, too. Mobiles, your, your range could be more limited on mobiles. Antennas aren't as good. You lower to the ground. So, again, CB is going to be affected by your topography, your train, your area, buildings, power lines. Oh, my God. Power lines are horrible. Um, when I get out in the woods, out hunting and stuff, there's a main transmission line. I don't know what it's carrying for voltage through it. There's a huge one that supplies um, a, a major region. And if I get near that thing with a CB, noise coming off that is just horrendous. But it's an option for you. No license is required. It's easy to do. It's easy to set up, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. And when these little buggers don't work, Especially if you're in close proximity, odds are you can probably find a channel to talk on. Uh, keep in mind, you know, you are on a party line, but at least you can communicate. Okay, now we start getting into the bigger boy toys, we'll say. The ham stuff, amateur radio. Amateur radio predates cell phones, internet, CBs. It predates public safety equipment. It predates pretty much anything. So, obviously, you know, the 
technology we have, the microprocessors, the computers to control stuff, doesn't. Spark gap transmitters, the guys that started inventing radio, using the vacuum tubes back in the day, which all morphed into what we have now. There's a lot of ham radio operators who invented things that everybody use every day, like cell phones. The guy who invented cell phones, ham radio operator. So we need to be able to reach out and touch more people, get further distance than the FRS will do or the GMRS or the MERS because, you know, on them, we're stuck. We're stuck with these few channels. We're stuck with limited range because of low power. We can't use external antennas. Um, the CB, yeah, we get out 20 miles with it from base stations, but I, you know, I can't always sit at home on a, ba on a base station. So I want to be able to do more. I want to be able to go mobile. I want to be able to go out with a portable and have better communication over longer distances. But the only way you're going to do that is to buck it up, suck it up, and go take a test. The technician test is not that hard, guys. My mom did it back in 2000. Um, she still has it. Once you take that test, you're done. You don't ever have to take it again as long as you keep your license current. If it expires, you have a two-year grace period. You can't operate within that two-year grace period. But you don't have to retest as long as you get your license back. You just reapply, send the paperwork in. You can do it electronic now, nowadays. And they'll just reissue your call sign two years and you're good to go again. Once you go outside the two-year grace period, then you'd have to go retest. Then you have the people who balk about, oh, yeah, 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 I ain't paying $15 to go take a freaking ham radio test. That's too expensive. Well, how much are you paying for a cell phone bill every damn month? How much are you paying for a phone bill every month, an internet bill? Um, a ham radio license, 15 bucks to take a test, and it's good for 10 years. And I'm not sure if they're charging anything for renewals now, but so what? Even if you had to pay 15, 20 bucks every 10 years? What the hell is that? That ain't nothing. For, you know, for what you get out of it. So, let's get into some ham stuff. Here we go. Oh. Zeb Strawberry Soda. If you ever get to North Conway, New Hampshire, go to Zeb's store. Get that strawberry soda. That is awesome. I bought a whole case of it. It was cheap, too. You know, sales tax. So we've got portable radios. This is a analog and digital radio. It'll run on the digital mobile radio network. I can stand right here, get on the North America Talk Group and go Canada, go all the way across the U.S. I can do my state, I can do my region on this thinky little rig. Yeah, okay, the DMR network. It's linked via some infrastructure. Eh, we lost that. That infrastructure crashed and burned. Big deal. Who cares? Still have our local analog repeaters. This will do that too. So I might be on the extreme fringe of my local repeaters. We'll pick one. I might be 10 miles away hitting the repeater with this thing. Yeah, I can do it. Somebody else might be 20 miles away hitting the repeater. Well, we can't do it direct, direct, simplex because these radios ain't going to go 10 miles in these parts on simplex. But we hit that repeater. We did it. We can talk. On digital, I can send text messages with this thing. It's old fashioned, like the old fashioned flip phones. You know, you get to punch out every character. But I can send a text message to a talk group with this. I'll do that in another video. And we also have some mobile radios. This is an old radio scrap. 
VHF analog has been patched up. But it works. This is a uh, radios don't have expiration dates, by the way, like band aids do. This is an old Yezu dual bander. It's VHF, UHF, it's analog. Works. Not very big. This is an old Kenwood. Again, not very big. These radios have uh, like 40 watts of output power. You know, use them for a base station, use them for a mobile station, use them portable if you need to. Hook them up to a battery, throw a J pole wire, whatever you need for an antenna up in a tree. Those are all used. Most of, this, most of the radio gear I have, I did not get brand new. It all came used. So I don't have a lot of money invested in ham radio gear. Over whatever 23 24 years, something like that. So, with those radios with a higher power, I could talk further than I can with the little portable. This little portable on VHF with five watts power is going to go a lot further than this little piece of crap with a half a watt or two watts power on UHF. Even on UHF with this. With 5 watts power, I'm going to go further than this little kitty toy. So, there's some options right there. Like I said, the technician test for everything I just showed you there. Piece of cake. There's nothing to it. It's, some, it's just general, very basic electrical principles. Some radio frequency safety. Some operating... Uh, procedures, how to use a radio. There's, there's people out there, well, I'll just use a ham radio if I ever need it. I'll, I'll, I'll get my hands on one or I've got one I'll use it. Oh yeah? You think so? Number one, probably nobody's going to give you the time of day when they figure out you're bootlegging, which means you're operating illegally. Number two, if I go hand you any one of these radios, go, here you go. You get any idea how to program the thing? Get any idea how to set up a repeater frequency in it? You even know how to use a repeater? Get any idea what your local simplex repeaters, uh, simplex repeaters, simplex frequencies are? Do you know what your local repeater frequencies are? Do you know how to call somebody? It ain't a CB, man. You don't just plug it in, turn it on, pick a channel. Doesn't work that way. So you can get that out of your head right now. Now, the technician license also covers a little bit of the HF band. You can get some Morse code privileges and I think it's like 40 meters, maybe 80 meters. Little itty bitty segments of it. That's the way it is. You can get some voice privileges in the 10 meter band. So, you know, maybe you and your family are, you know, within 50, 60 miles. You can get some 10 meter gear and, and do some ground waves. That's that's cool too. 10 meters is right next to CB band. Literally, they're, they're neighbors are neck and neck. So there's another option too. And you're not channelized there. You've got some room to spread out and move around. Um, you can use the phone part of the band. So there's another option maybe you could do. Now we get into some HF or shortwave. So this radio right here is the one I used to talk to the guy in Italy with. I also took it to North Conway with me and set it up in a motel room at, at uh, yeah, floor level, ground level. And uh, my antenna, which I'll show you in a minute, is the same MP1 I've been playing around with and have done a couple other videos with. And I had that setting on the floor <laughs> uh, clamped up to a wooden bed frame with a counterpoise wire strung across the floor. Uh, not ideal at all. It worked. So this radio, here's the back, is not big at all. doesn't weigh much.
This is an HF radio. Covers 10 meters all the way down to 160 meters in the handband. Power up puts 100 watts on high power. So that radio right there that I just showed you, you can use with a technician license, but you can only use the segments of certain HF bands, um, which are on the band chart that the FCC permits you to use. 10 meters, you know, you're pretty much good to go with a tech license. Um, to use the rest of the HF bands, like 12, 15, 17, 20, 40, 80, 160, with more privileges, phone, uh, also known as voice privileges, you'd have to get a, at least a general class license, which isn't that hard either. Extra, extra is a real pain in the ass. So maybe general is an option for you too, if you really want to reach out and touch somebody. You can find the study manuals online. Uh, make sure they're in date and current. Don't, God, I'm a volunteer examiner. And several years ago, we were doing a test session. Now, this, is, this is real world experience, so use caution. Um, this is advice to save you some pain and agony. We were doing a test session, and there was a woman there. And she took like two or three shots at the technician test and she was failing miserably and I go you know what is what is wrong here you know I knew this woman and she's not dumb she's not stupid and she'd been studying and studying and studying and I walked up to her and said hey what are you using for a study guide she happened to have her book with her and, and the books actually have the test question pool in the back you can see the questions you can see the answer pool it's it, it's pretty pretty nice. You can do practice tests online too. Well, she she hadn't done the ones online. She just used the book. Well, I look at the book and the date on the book. The book she got her hands on was outdated by years. It had the old question pool that didn't even exist anymore. So the questions and stuff she was seeing on the exam weren't in the book and the information in the book was outdated so make sure what you get for your study materials is in date don't get something from you know dad or grandpa that he had 10 years ago or maybe even five years ago because you might be getting bad information i should probably do a video on that too anyway let's get back to the hf um So this radio, like I said, I think I paid a couple hundred bucks for this use. Nothing I guess new, really. So there I was sitting in North Conway, New Hampshire. I described my setup. On HF, I was talking to a guy in Central Kentucky. Better than 800 miles away. Talked to some guys in New York. 200, 250 miles away. Whole infrastructure. Radio to radio. Here's me, here's them. Wherever they were. And uh, I used a deep cycle battery for power. We can do that. No cell towers, no switches, no computers processing it, nothing like that. So that radio there will get me around the world. It'll get me around my country. It'll get me into Canada, Mexico. It'll get me two miles down the road. Um, there's a ham operator. I can talk to him on 80 meters. Um, it gets me around my state. I've demonstrated that. That's an uh, why ham radio works and all its fails part three. You'll see I have a contact with the statewide traffic net. And uh, some of the guys in the state. So, you know, maybe the portable won't do it. 
Maybe the VHF, UHF won't do it without repeaters. We lose the repeaters, VHF will do it. So, you know, you, your friends, your family, you want something that's rock solid. Your MER is not going to work. Your FRS is not going to work. Your GMRS is not going to work. What's going to work? The ham radio is going to work. I mean, you, you're not going to go out and just get some ham radio gear or throw it in the closet, and then when you need it, set it up, and miraculously it works. You need to do a little bit of learning. You need to play around with it. You need to experiment with it. You need to try it out. Find out what band is going to work the best for you. And, you know, anybody with a gear is going to try the gear. Don't just buy it. Stow it away. So I guess with that, one, one, more thing, one more thing. The antenna I was using in New Hampshire, this is it. The MP1. I have, have it featured in a couple of other, other videos. This is what it looks like all torn apart. Those are the two loading coils. The bigger one covers 10 through 40. The little one is an add-on to get 75 and 80 meters. Then you have these two base sections and then the telescoping whip. Look how tiny that thing is. And it works. I've been doing 150 miles, 200, 250, 800 plus with this little thing. So if you want a small antenna, you can literally shove in the cargo pockets of your BDU pants. There it is. You can rig up some dipoles, which are nothing more than wire. You can get vertical antennas. There's a million different ways to build the antennas. You'll need to learn a little bit about that. It's not hard. So if you have any questions, obviously throw them out. I'll help you out as best as I can. Because that's what we do. We want to be able to talk when the internet and the phones and all this stuff doesn't work anymore. And it's been proven time and time and time and time again around the world. This stuff that you see, it always works.